Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're having a wonderful day. So in this episode, we're gonna make this really cute canvas bag. So this bag has the fold over style, it has the adjustable strap, there are three slip pockets and one zipper pocket in the interior of the bag. The finish measurement of this bag is approximately 16 inches wide at the widest point. And when it's folded like this, it's about 10 inches tall. However, the overall height of the bag is about 13 inches. So it is pretty spacious. I wore this yesterday, so it was so much fun. And um, I really, really like how it looks. And when you wear it, the fabric will drape and it will have that slouchy look, which I think is pretty cute. For the fabric, I'm using this charming canvas fabric in a plate um, pattern. Usually canvas fabric is something that you can find at the home decor section of your local fabric store. I've got my fabric from Joann's. You can also use linen, um, full leather, or quilt weight fabric. Now, um, one of the highlights of this project is this uh, zipper closure. Now, you may have seen me performing zipper closure in several different videos before. However, in this video, I'm going to show you just a little bit different technique with a little extra effort that will make your zipper and your zipper tabs look really nice and neat. If you are an experienced bag maker, you probably already know what I'm talking about. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope your bag turned out great. And without further ado, let's get started. For the exterior shell, you will need one main fabric and one accent fabric. Cut up your fabric according to the cutting instructions. They should appear on the screen right now or you can hop over to the description box or visit my blog post at yoansewingstudio.com. Lay out your main fabric and your accent fabric just like shown here and then go ahead and sew them right side together with quarter inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, go ahead and press the seams. So you wanna make two of these, each for the front and the back exterior. For the interfacing, we're gonna use fusible fleece or the thermalum. I cut my fusible fleece an inch shorter than the actual measurements of the exterior pieces to reduce the bulk around the top and the bottom. To apply this, you want to take your exterior piece and lay that wrong side up. Center the position. There should be half an inch of gap on both the top and the bottom as well. Now go ahead and fuse this with an iron according to the manufacturer's instruction. From your lining fabric, cut two pieces of rectangles for the back interior. Now we're gonna work on the slip pockets. So prepare your pocket pieces, lay them right side together, and then go ahead and sew the top and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, go ahead and press the seams open. Turn the pocket inside out, and then you wanna go ahead and press this again and top stitch along the top edges. We're gonna divide this pocket into three slots. So take your ruler and then you wanna measure six inch from the edge and then draw a line with your fabric marker. Repeat the same for the other edge as well. Lay the pocket piece on the right side of the lining piece, about four inches down from the top Secure them in place with a couple of pins and then go ahead and sew along the mark lines and the bottom as well. So you should end up with something like this. Don't worry about the sides, it's going to get stitched anyway with the side seams. If you want to add the zipper pocket on the other lining piece, this is the time to do it. I'm not going to show you in this video, however, I will link a part of another back video that demonstrates how to sew this uh, zipper pocket. So if you need the tutorial, I will have the link in the description box and the comment section below as well. For the bottom gusset, you only need to cut one from the accent fabric and one from the lining fabric. 
For this bag, I want to make the bottom gusset to be firm and sturdy. So I'm using this Peltex sew-in stabilizer. This is a heavyweight interfacing and it's great to add structure to a certain part of your bag. Now you can use a foam stabilizer for this or you can skip this and just use the fleece. So I'm going to place this on the wrong side of my bottom gusset piece, center the position. And then I'm going to use my fusible woven interfacing that I cut exactly the same size as the bottom gusset and lay it up on top of the peltex and I'm going to fuse them together. This way the fusible woven interfacing is going to seal the peltex. So for this project you will need at least 16 inches long zipper. I'm using the purse size zipper here so it is a slight larger in size. You can also use all purpose zipper. Now what we're going to do, we're going to need to trim the zipper to measure exactly 16 inches from one end to another. And here I've got my zipper already trimmed, so the entire length of this zipper should be now 16 inches from one edge to the other edge. For the zipper tabs, you're going to need to cut two identical rectangles. So I cut mine 3 inch by 2 inch. Now go to your ironing board and then fold the end of your zipper tab, the shorter end, about quarter of an inch and then press. And you want to do the same with the opposite end. Now fold them in half where you meet the folded edges and press. Now feed the end of the zipper into the zipper tab. So you want to go all the way in, so the edges of your zipper should be touching the edges of the zipper tab. Secure that in place with a sewing clip and then do the same with the other side. And then go ahead and sew along the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, go ahead and trim off the excess zipper tabs. Now let's work on the strap anchors. So cut one rectangle measuring 5 inches wide by 4 inch long. Fold your rectangle in half lengthwise and press. And then fold the edges towards the center fold and then press and then fold everything in half again and press. So you should end up with a strip of fabric measuring 5 by 1 inch. Now go ahead and sew along the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now go ahead and cut this strip in half. So I'm going to measure 2 and a half inch and cut. So you should end up with two strap anchors measuring 2 and a half inch by 1 inch. For the strap, I'm going to use the remaining of my main fabric. So I'm going to cut some 4 inch strips here and then I'm going to join them together to measure 60 inches. Feel free to use your accent fabric for your strap or the entire different fabric or you can also use webbing strap or pre-made strap. So here I've already sewn my strips together. The length of this strip is now 60 inches and the width is of course 4 inches. Now I'm not gonna interface my strap since I'm using canvas fabric which is already thick enough. If you're using the quilt weight fabric, you will need to interface this with the fusible woven interfacing. We're gonna do the usual fold and pressing method. So starting off by folding the end of the strap half an inch and then press. And then you wanna do the same with the other end. Fold the strap in half and press. Open the fold and then fold the edges towards the center fold and then press. Do the same with the other side. Now fold everything in half again and press. Now go ahead and sew all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance.
Now we're going to prepare the hardware. You will need two swivel hooks and one adjuster slider. And of course, they should measure one inch. Take the adjuster and hold that right side up. Take one of the end of your strap and then feed that through the adjuster from the wrong side towards the right side and then back to the wrong side. Have about one and a half inch of clearance and then go ahead and sew two lines to secure this in place. Stitch back and forth few times to reinforce your strap. So you should end up with something like this. Now set this aside in the same position with the end of the strap facing up. And then you want to take the other end of the strap and then feed that through one of the swivel hook. You want to push the swivel hook a little bit towards the center. Take the adjuster and then feed the end of the strap from the wrong side towards the right side and then back to the wrong side. Pull your strap through, meanwhile you want to double check that there is no twist and then take the other swivel hook and then feed the end of the strap through leaving about one and a half inch of clearance and then go ahead and stitch two lines to secure this in place. Now we're gonna start assembling the back. So take your exterior piece, this is my front exterior, um, lay that right side up and then take the zipper and then lay that right side down. Now you want to position your zipper on the center and there should be half an inch gap from both edges. Take the lining and then lay that right side down. Secure them in place with some sewing clips and then go ahead and sew along the edges. I'm sewing with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. I'm using my walking foot here, although you can also use zipper foot. Now open up the sandwich, separate the zipper from the fabric, and then go ahead and press the seams. I'm using my Hera marker here, but you can also use iron on low setting. And once you've done that, go ahead and top stitch. Now take the back exterior piece, lay that right side up, and then take the zipper, lay that right side down, lining the edges, and then take the lining and lay that right side down. Secure everything with some sewing clips, and then go ahead and sew along the edges. Now open up the sandwich and find the zipper, Press the seams and then go ahead and top stitch. Alright y'all, I almost forgot attaching the strap anchors. So let's do this now. I'm going to take my D-ring and then insert my strap anchor just like so. Obviously you will need to use one inch wide D-ring. I'm going to attach this to the front exterior. So I'm going to measure two and a half inch from the top edge of my front exterior piece and then place a little mark there. And I'm gonna do the same with the other side as well. I would usually do this before I attach the zipper. So if you're attaching your strap anchors before attaching the zipper, you should measure three inches from the top edges of your exterior piece. Now I'm going to place my strap anchor where the mark is and of course I'm not going to attach the lining so I'll, I will make sure that it is separated from the lining. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure this in place with a sewing clip and do the same with the other side. Now I'm going to stitch them in place with quarter inch of seam allowance and of course without stitching the lining. Now separate the exterior from the lining. So the right side of your exterior shell should be touching each other and the right side of your lining should be touching each other. Now you want to match the top side seams or where the zipper is and then use your sewing clip or pins to secure this in place and do the same with the other side.
Alright, now we're gonna go ahead and pin both side seams. So we're gonna sew the side seams starting from the center or where the zipper seams are, one side at a time. So I'm going to start sewing the exterior side from the center down and then I'm going to sew the lining from the center down and then repeat the same for the opposite side. So we're going to sew with half an inch of seam allowance. Now you want to make sure that your needle is right next to the zipper tab but not stitching the zipper tab. I start sewing exactly from the top of the exterior seams and make sure to backstitch to reinforce this. You may have to move your needle all the way to the left. This way your presser foot will have a lot of room to wiggle. Now when you sew the lining, you want to sort of continue. So start from the very first stitch and then make sure to back stitch as well and then continue down. Next, we're going to attach the bottom gussets. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to find the center points of all the sides of this bottom gusset. To do that, I'm going to fold the gusset in half and then cut a little notch on the center with my scissors. Now with the bottom exterior, I'm going to match the seams and then I'm going to make a little notch on both center points. Now I'm going to pin the bottom gusset to the bottom exterior. So I'm going to match the side seam with the notch that I created. Now for this side, I'm going to first match the notches in the center. Once everything is secured, go ahead and sew all around with half an inch of seam allowance. Sew with the gusset facing up one side at a time. Sew the lining gusset the same way, however, leave about 6 inches of opening to turn the back inside out later. Turn the back inside out through the opening hole.
Now you should be able to push and neaten up the zipper tab easily since they weren't in the way with the seam allowance. Next you want to pull out the lining and find the opening hole, fold the row edges in about half an inch and then go ahead and stitch along the edges to close this opening. Once you've done that, you can put your lining back inside. Now you can attach the strap and train the back a little bit to be folded. I think it's easier you do this when you're wearing it. And voila, your back is done. And that's all I play today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already so you won't miss any future uploads. And I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting projects. Goodbye!